Hi, my name is Jason McKenzie and I'm a sound designer for video games. In these videos, I'm going to be going over my implementation of Wise into Unreal. I'm going to split these videos into parts to make it a little bit more digestible. So today's video will be on footsteps. I start in Wise by importing the footsteps that I recorded into the actor mixer hierarchy. So in the audio importer, under object type slash action, you can set the parent folder to a switch container and all the child folders as random containers. To give a little explanation to what these containers are, a random container is a container you can place objects in which are then played in a random order. You can adjust how random the container works in the properties editor. Switch container is a container that plays objects or containers inside of it depending on what switch is triggered by the game engine. Once I have those imported, for the switch container to work and for me to hear the sounds in Unreal, I will need to connect it via switches. These are the objects that will receive the game calls sent by Unreal. So the switches are created under the Game Syncs tab in the Projects Explorer. First by making the switch group, then creating the actual switches. These are labeled after each footstep material I'm planning to use in the Unreal project. I need to remember the exact names I've given these switches as I will need them again later in this video. Once the switches are done, I move back to the switch container I created and assign the switch group in the property editor. With these now connected, I can start assigning my random container cells to the switches in the contents editor. I'll also set a default switch. This is so there's always a footstep sound being triggered. With this done, the first half is now set up. I can check if this is working by going to the transport control. I set it to switches and start swapping between the switches in the drop down menu. So before going into Unreal, the final part I need to do in Wise is creating the event. The events are the final connection that drives your audio in the game engine. All the objects I create in Wise will need an event. These events are then placed into sound banks that are then generated into Unreal. Now onto the second part, moving into Unreal. I first connect my sound banks to my footsteps event in the content browser, and I also generate the bank. Next, I move on to setting up the physical materials. These are what will attach to my floor mesh and let my blueprint know, which I'll speak about later, what material the player is standing on. I start by going into project settings, physics, and physical surface types. Here's where I place the exact names I use for my switches in Wise. Once that done, I move on to making a physical material asset in the contents browser. Here again, I use the same names I use for my switches in Wise. These physical materials are then attached to the appropriate materials, and the materials then are attached to the floor mesh. So now our floor meshes are primed and ready for when our player steps on. Now I'll start talking about the final piece needed, which is setting up the blueprint, which is a visual script. My footsteps are gonna be for a first person player, so I'm gonna be using Unreal's first person character blueprint. So opening up the first person character blueprint, I'll go over what these nodes are doing in a very simple and brief way. Blueprint starts by trying to find out what we're stepping on by using a line trace by channel. This will scan underneath the first person character and this will find out what material we're stepping on. This is why we set up all our physical materials beforehand and attach them to our floor mesh. Once it knows which physical material we're standing on, it will send a game call communicating with wires, telling it what containers to switch to and post the event via the AKA nodes we have here. Another very important thing to note is the set string variables we have. Again, you can see I've used the exact same labeling I can use for switch to wire. It's very important to remember to keep all the naming and labels exactly the same, both in wires and Unreal, if you want them to communicate and things to work properly. Also very importantly, I set up a timer, so when the player is moving, instead of the sounds just being continuously posted, it will be posted at a more realistic walking speed for the first person character. I'll compile and save that, and now we should have in-game footsteps. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Part 2 we'll be looking at room reverb and portals.